Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we are continuing our video series on sequences today by talking about applications of arithmetic sequences in a simple interest context. In this video, we're going to be fairly quick. We're going to do a very brief recap of what simple interest is. We're going to talk about the context of simple interest in a recurrence relation and then talk about our upcoming videos. Now, if you are looking for a video on simple interest, this one's aimed at our senior students right across Australia in grades 11 and 12, whether you're doing general maths or maths applications or even maths methods. So if you're in junior school, grades 7 to 10, and you're looking for a quick, easy video on simple interest, you're in the wrong playlist. You need to jump over to Consumer Arithmetic and click on the simple interest video there. I've got the link for that in our um, details for this video. So in this part, we're going to do a very quick recap of what simple interest is, because if you're in year 12, the last time you looked at this was grade 11. So you should know this formula by now. It is on your QCAA formula sheet if you're in Queensland, I equals pin, but you should know it off by heart. You've known this one since grade 9. So firstly, we're looking at I. Now, when we talk about simple interest, we're talking about in the context of a loan or an investment. So if this is an investment, it's the total interest that you earned in dollars over the lifetime of that investment. But if it's something that you've borrowed, then it's going to be the amount of interest that you've paid. Capital P is the principal, the amount that you start with. It's either the amount that you borrow or the amount that you invest. I is your interest rate as a percentage turned into a decimal. So if it's 3%, you're gonna change that into a decimal to use it in the formula. And lastly, N is the number of years of the loan or the investment. Okay, so for more information to on using I equals PIN in different forms, rearranging the formula, finding different variables, go and watch the other video first and then come back here and we'll talk about it in the context of a recurrence relation. So you would recall from our previous video in our introduction to arithmetic sequences that the basic form in the form of a recurrence relation of an arithmetic sequence is the first term is equal to a, then we have the comma to separate the equation, that the nth term plus the common difference is equal to the n plus oneth term. Now with simple interest, we've got a different situation. Our principal is the amount that we start with. It's the amount that was either invested or the amount that was borrowed at the very beginning. Nothing's been added to it yet. So we're actually going to call it time zero. And every time you see a time or a term in a sequence relating to simple interest, it always refers to that first term being the amount that has had the interest already added to it. It's actually the amount at the end of the first year. So term five, T5, would be the amount of the loan or the amount um, that's been invested, including all the interest that's been added at the end of the fifth year. So that's an important nuance or difference between your standard arithmetic sequence recurrence relation. So we need to rewrite this to reflect that our starting amount the is the principal T0 and that it's not term one because term one has that first year of interest added on. Also, something a little bit different about a recurrence relation for simple interest is that D is the amount of simple interest that gets added every single year because it's the same amount every year in simple interest scenarios. Now, you would recall from I equals PIN that that's a calculation. We actually have to calculate how much gets added on in every year. It's the amount of interest that gets earned or paid. It's capital I. So our common difference is equal to I and T0 is equal to our principal. So for simple interest, we've got a different recurrence relation that we're going to work with. Instead of writing T1, the first term, we're actually going to write V0, which means our value at time 0 is equal to A. That's our principal, it's the amount that we start with. And then our value in the nth year plus the interest we earn in that year will give us the value at the end of the next year. So this is not on your formula sheet anywhere. You need to memorize this. However, you may feel that that's fairly intuitive. If you just remember the basic form of the recurrence relation, you'll be able to make the little adjustment over to simple interest. That's your call. Some people, however, really struggle with um, knowing what to do when they get to a simple interest situation. Just remember, instead of T1, it's V0. Let's try this with a worked example and it will start to make a little bit more sense. Genuity is borrowing $5,000 at 2.5% per annum for 10 years. Let's write a recurrence relation for just the first year. Okay, so we start with our basic form that we've just talked about, V0 equals A, Vn plus 1 equals Vn plus D. 
let's substitute some information. Well, firstly, we've got some really easy information we can put in there. Our value at time zero when she's borrowed the money is $5,000. That's our principal. So we could put that straight into the recurrence relation. That's easy. Now we need to work out the common difference. So to do that, we need to use the formula I equals PIN because that's the amount of interest that gets added every year. So let's firstly put that into the screen at the top and we're going to start working away with i equals pin so p will be our principal 5000 multiplied by 0 0.025 our interest rate as a decimal and n is going to be equal to one now you might be asking well, hang on a minute it's a 10 year loan well we don't want to work out how much interest is charged over 10 full years we want to know how much interest is added in the first year which will be the same amount that then gets added in the second year and the third year and the fourth year and so on so to work out for one year our n value is going to be equal to one otherwise we find 10 years worth of interest not one that's our common difference so the common difference will be 125 and we're going to put that into our recurrence relation now v0 is going to be 5000 and vn plus one will be vn plus 125 so each year 125 dollars interest gets added Next example is we're going to use that to develop our first five terms. Now, the best way I can think to present this is in a table. And sometimes you're given a table in an exam and just asked to complete it. So it's also good to see what that would look like. So we've got our terms on the side. We're developing the first five terms. Now, you'll notice that I've only done N 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's actually five terms. Um, the first term being 0 gets included. So VN is my um, next column. My interest is the third column, and it's going to be the same every year. We're adding 125, and then we work out what VN plus 1 is. Now, we know that time at V0 is 5,000. If we add $125 worth of interest, we get $5,125. And that amount then becomes my amount in V1. And then we add 125 again, and then we bring that down to V2 and so on all the way across until we've completed the table. So the last number in the table becomes the first number in the next row. Well, we have covered simple interest very quickly. I told you and promised you it was going to be fast. In our next video, we're going to apply recurrence relations to depreciation. The one after that, we're going to look at population growth. We'll also do some complex questions from past papers as well using arithmetic sequences and geometric sequences. We're also going to have a video dedicated to our method students looking at some of arithmetic sequences and a little mini series on geometric sequences as well. I'd like to welcome all of our new subscribers to the channel and say if you're here and you've subscribed, thank you so much for joining us and follow us on Facebook as well. And that way you'll know every time a new video is coming out, if you're not on YouTube, you'll get the notification there. Thank you again for joining us. You can always email us at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com if you'd like to make some suggestions about future videos or request anything, or if you just need a little bit of help. Thank you so much again for joining me. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a lovely day.